All right, here we go with part three of this amplifier build. So what we're going to do today is sketch up a uh, rough draft of the schematic. All right, so here we are to uh, start doing our first draft of this amplifier. So just as a recap, if you remember this sheet, this sheet details what we wanted. So we wanted a 10, 10 to 15 watt. Uh, I found a cheap uh, single-ended output transformer that'll give me 10 watts so it's going to be it's going to be 10 watts that we're going to do so we're going to do a 10 watt amp this is a 10 inch speaker this doesn't really have anything to do with what we're doing right now uh, we just know that the output transformer is going to be 8 ohms so we're just going to get a 10 inch 8 ohm speaker when we get to that point but that's on the latter rung of what's going to be going on particularly what's important today is going to be this tone control, the volume control, and the gain control, where to put those things in the circuitry. Those are going to be the three unknowns. Because we figured out, again, we know what, what, what wattage we want, what size speaker, what ohm the speaker's going to be, because the output transformer that we chose is an 8 ohm output at 10, 10 watts, so that'll dictate how many ohms our speaker is. Now, if we've picked our our preamp tubes, the six SN7s, that run at 1.2 amps. And we're gonna go single-ended with a KT66 that's interchangeable with a 6L6GC also. And uh, using a KT66 with a six SN7s will put us right at 2.5 amps of filament voltage which is uh, exactly what our transformer is rated for, so we're okay there. So we've made it that far. So and this is what we've done uh, throughout this series. So I'll go through these design steps again. So we, first we detailed the, the primary features and parameters. That's what we just went over. Second is we defined the voltage requirements and tube selection. We did that with uh, in the second video, um, looking at the filament voltages and deciding what tubes fit best uh, with the power transformer that we picked out. Now today we're going to draw out the first rough draft of the schematic, and that's what we're going to do right here. Now I'm not really working off anything else, I'm just going to go off the top based on what we have here. So. For this, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to write out the, the schematic, let's say, from from front to back or from start to finish or from input to output like you normally would do. But I'm going to start with the things that I know the most about, right? So, again, the unknowns here. The unknowns for us today are where to put the tone control, where to put the... Uh, the volume and where to put the gain. Those are all basically preamp. That's all preamp unknowns, right? So I don't exactly know what my preamp is gonna look like right now, but I know what my output is gonna look like because I know I want a 10 watt, I'm using a 10 watt output transformer at eight ohms and I know it's single-ended. So, and I know I'm gonna use a KT66, so I can start there and just start detailing uh, the areas of the schematic of which I already uh, I know to be true, right? So I'm going to start writing out an output transformer here. Again, this is only the first draft, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So here's my output side of the output transformer. That would be going to the speaker. I'm going to put 8 ohms here. And this is going to be the side that goes to my output tube, which is a KT66. So I'm just drawing the winding here. This is where the B plus would go. Let 
getting off the line here. So this is my KT sixty six. I'm going to go cathode bias. Again, remember this This uh, amp is about being the least complex. Uh, so I picked the least complex transformer I could find with the right voltages. It doesn't have a 50 volt tap to do a uh, fixed bias. So we're going to go cathode bias, which is just fine. I prefer to do that anyway. So I'm going to put here this cathode bias uh, resistor. Again, we're just working off what we know about thus far. Um, now, I don't know. I'm not going to put any values here. I could, I could estimate what value uh, resistor is going to be here, but I'm not even going to go that far this yet. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put the resistor there because that's what we're doing, right? We're doing a cathode. We're doing a cathode bias KT66. So that resistor is there. So that's just the general and most simplistic form of our output, what our output's going to look like. Um, now we can start. Again, we're doing this kind of backwards because because I'm unsure about what I want the front of the amp to look like, uh, where I want to put that tone control, and the volume control, and the gain control, but but I can I can discern okay where, what what the output's going to look like because we have solid parameters for that. And now working backwards now, so from the from the output, I also know that I need something to drive. This KT66. So this is my output. This is where I'm going to be getting my 10, my 10 watts. My 10 watts comes from comes from this tube, right? But now I have to have the preamp section is what's going to drive that tube, right? So I have to have a driver, and one of those drivers, that driver or drivers, is going to be a uh, is going to be at least one triode of that. 6SN7. So I can start here by drawing a 6SN7. Actually, you know what? To be more accurate, so remember when we were talking about going, having to find out where our volume control and our gain control would be. This is actually a, a great spot to put your uh, volume control. So if I actually, I'll actually start with putting a volume control right here. And again, I'm working this backwards, so it might seem kind of odd, but it'll make sense later on. Uh, so for this vacuum control, this uh, volume control, then I'm just going to put a potentiometer here. That's going to be my volume control. And it's going to be coming off of whatever is driving this KT66 which will be again part of our part of our uh, 6SN7 will be this KT66 we'll be driving this KT66 actually see as you again I'm doing this as I go along so I'm going to be making a bunch of mistakes here uh, this 6SN7, I'm actually going to, if I'm going to put my volume control there and have a, 
a 6s and 7 drive that volume control and drive the uh, the KT66 then it'll actually be more beneficial for me to make this a cathode follower so because a cathode follower will lower the impedance so if I drive the KT66 and this volume control from this cathode follower and basically in some ways you can just say like you just get uh, more bang for your buck uh, so basically all that energy the energy that comes from here and the energy that comes from all the circuitry prior to this tube will be transferred more efficiently if I use a cathode follower so that's what I'm going to do. So again, we're just working off of, you know, best practices here. Uh, again, I'm not picking any values. I'm just kind of setting up uh, kind of a rough skeleton of, of what this thing is going to look like. All right, so that, that covers our volume control. So that's one thing. That's one thing we've got gotten out of the way. So we've got our... We've got our output section, we've got our volume control, and we know that one, one of the four triodes of the two 6SN7s that we're using is going to be a cathode follower that is going to drive this volume control and go into that KT66. Now that's great. That's a that's a fairly good uh, design idea. But the thing now going forward, what we have to pay attention to is now having this cathode follower here, which does not produce any gain. These cathode followers have low impedance, but do not produce any gain. We need a lot of gain to drive this KT66. So, for the fact of us having this cathode follower here. We're going to have to make sure that the three, the last, the, the three remaining six SN seven triodes that we have left are going to be high gain. They're going to set up high gain for us. So we want the rest of the circuitry to be really, to be real high gain, because that's where most of our that's where most of our gain is going to come from. It's going to all of our gain is going to come from what we do in the in the first part in the input part of the of the uh, amplifier it's not going to come from here this is where a wad is going to come from there's not going to think this is basically just like a this is like an impedance transfer right this is really just working for us to uh, change the impedance but it's not doing anything for gain right it's going to be good to drive this volume control and it's going to be good to get all this energy from here into this grid but we now we have to make that energy essentially so Uh, just off the top, I was wanting to do something like an what they call an SSRP uh, setup for the for the input, which is a high gain that uses two triodes. It's a high gain circuit that uses two triodes. So let me make a rough sketch of that and see how that would how that would look and how that would benefit us here so this is an SSRP or sometimes referred to as a totem pole now you can also take the uh, take the output off this in many different ways but this is why again it's just going to be rough I don't even know if I'm going to pick out necessarily where I want the output to come out of yet in this circuit I'm just going to draw it. Uh, hmm. Okay. It's 
So that's the basic skeleton of our SSRP circuit. And actually, see what makes this actually, this will make it even more linear. Again, as I'm designing as I'm going, so I, I, I'm picking up things as we go along here. So, hmm. One thing I'm thinking about now is getting rid of the DC component. So we've been basically talking about the AC component where our signal's coming from, but there's also a DC component. So when you're designing an amplifier, there's three main things that you're trying to balance. Uh, it's the DC component, the AC component, and your tone. So the DC component would be your high voltages, or just your voltages in any way, and your high and low voltages, whatever, just your voltages. Just voltages. And your AC component would be your signal. And then your tone would be all the all the um, the resistor, the RC, what you'd call the RC uh, networks, all the resistor and capacitor networks that create um, create low pass or high pass filters. So those are the three things that we're trying to balance here. So thus far, I've kind of got a good AC path. My signal, this is kind of what I'm worried about, is my signal, how to get the signal from the input here through this SSRP circuit into this cathode follower that would drive this, this volume control and into this uh, KT66. But now, what just came to mind is I'm wanting to take the output of this SSRP from the plate into the grid of this cathode follower, but there's going to be high voltage at this plate. It's going to be high voltage, high gain. That's why I want to take it out of this plate because it's going to be really high gain, but it's also going to be high voltage. But I can't have that voltage go into this volume control or into that grid. So that voltage has to die off before it ever gets into this junction here. I can't have this high voltage there. So I'd have to do something. Again, this is just real first draft, so it's going to be real, real primitive here in a sense. So, so I'm going to have to put a capacitor There's going to have to be a capacitor there. But now because I have that capacitor there, I might still need a little bit of voltage to drive this cathode follower. So I might have to put a resistor here from the grid to the plate. Actually, even make it something. Maybe even put another one here, a pull down resistor from here onto the plate that goes to ground. All right, so from there. And of course, these would all be, this is where my B plus, this is where you can also figure out where your B plus is going to be. So I need, I know now I need at least, I'm going to have to at least need three B plus connections, high voltage connections from my power supply. Because remember, the power supply is going to be down here. 
eventually. And we can start detailing that after we get through this. But I haven't detailed the power supply yet because I don't know how many taps and uh, what voltages I need for the high voltage yet. Now I have a better idea because we just laid all that out. So I know I need one, two, three. And another general rule in uh, constructing an amplifier is that you want the, the gain and the voltages to, uh, to increase further along you are into the output section. So this gain is going to be lower than this one, and this one is going to be lower than this one, right? So this this will be higher, and that will be higher than that. So you always want the the next stage to be higher than the stage before it in, in gain and in voltage because they work in conjunction. Uh, so... This is not a bad start. I know some things are probably going to change here, uh, especially the way I have this resistor network going. I'm not sure. I'm probably not going to power this cathode follower in that way, but I like the fact of having this cathode follower there. I'm just going to figure out a, a cleaner way to drive it. Um, now we're just focusing on where we want our input to go. Hmm. Yeah, so I believe traditionally our input from this SSRP would come from this bottom grid here. So this would be our input. And uh, I'll also describe some of these components uh, at the end of this. So our input's going to come in to this, this grid. This will actually be actually a good place to put a potentiometer here. So this resistor is here. Primarily to uh, keep out radio interference. Typically, you'll see a uh, 68k ohm resistor at the at the beginning of an amplifier or two amplifier for the sake of keeping out uh, radio interference. Uh, but we could also we could replace that with a uh, with a potentiometer. So actually I'll just put a, I don't usually write potentiometers like this, but I'll just do it kind of the old school way where you have the, uh, the resistor with an arrow through it. And that'll, I like to write them out like that, but I just don't have space. So I'll put the uh, resistor with an arrow through it. And that'll be, that'll be our gain. So right here, see now, so again, what we're trying to do is just, uh, solve for these unknowns so remember we had we had to figure out where to put a tone control where to put our gain and our volume so now we've we've figured out two of those parameters so we've got we've got our volume control here and our gain control there so that's two of the three parameters we wanted to figure out we've got that settled which is great. So let me just finish drawing this connection between this SSRP here. All right. So just a general overview of these components. As you can see, I have mostly resistors in here. And the reason why I have mostly resistors, you see there's a resistor here, 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 and here. And I have all resistors at the cathode of each of these tubes. That's because tubes need to be what you call biased to operate, uh, which means they need basically need voltage flowing in a certain direction. So you generally always want to have positive voltage at your cathode and getting the, 
the ability, getting the ability to have this uh, positive voltage at the cathode. Um, helps when you have a uh, resistor here. So the resistor here is what is what's what's going to accomplish uh, our high volt or getting voltage to this cathode. When I say voltage, I mean it can be one, usually one to three volts. It's not a lot, but it's just there to uh, to bias the tube. Now it'll usually it'll be more with your with your output tube because it's a lot larger. Uh, it could be upwards of 30 volts. Uh, but that's why those resistors are here. These cathode resistors are there to bias the cathodes. This resistor here is what you call a pull-down resistor. It's on the grid, and that's also to, to bias the grid. So you always want to you want to have your grid at zero to negative. So zero, either zero, I'd say zero to about negative one, negative one point five, something like that. So you want to keep your grid at zero when your your cathode between two and or one and three, and your high voltage uh, at your plate, you know, which could be which could be uh, right now. I mean, we're going to say if we look back at our sheet. Well, actually, I don't have it on this sheet, but I have it in memory. So our the re uh, power transformer we picked out was a Hammond that supplied 380 volts which after rectification will probably come up to maybe uh, 430 when it has load on it so probably have somewhere in between maybe 200 volts here 250 and then and then three or it could be 380 it could be 400 usually you tend to want run this just wide open so your highest voltage source so I mean really it could be if it goes up to 4 430 420 then and that's what's going to be running this uh, this KT66. All right, so we've got a rough draft of our of our preamp circuitry and our output. So this is kind of rough of what the amp is going to look like. We haven't figured out yet where the tone control is going to be. Uh, I could tell you right now it could be. I got three spots. It could be over here. It could be down here, and it could be over here, but we'll X that out for now. So this basically these two main areas, so over here, over here. But I'm going to leave that blank for now, because um, I actually I could put it over here also with this volume control and make a tone control circuit here. Uh, but that is going to be one of the latter things I deliberate. Right now, I'm feeling pretty comfortable with this. Uh, again, we have our we have our input coming into this SSRP uh, circuit, so it goes in through this grid, up through this plate, into this cathode, up through that plate, and it goes into this cathode follower. The voltage is killed by this capacitor. It goes into this that cathode follower, which drives which drives this volume control, which is then is going to drive this KT66 at our output, which gives us 10 watts at 8 ohms. All right, again, it's a pretty simple circuit. Um, we're trying to make it very simple. Uh, this is one of the reasons, actually, that vacuum tubes, vacuum tube amplifiers are preferred. It's because uh, the circuitry is simpler and just has a, a kind of rule of thumb and. Uh, in audio circuitry, the simpler the uh, the simpler the circuit, the better it'll sound. You know, the more the, the less the less you inhibit the frequency, the better it'll sound. The more natural it'll sound. So, tube tube amps are 
they function in a much more simplistic way than uh, solid state amplifiers. So you don't want to disrupt what they have going for them. You don't want to disrupt the fact that they, uh, they have an advantage for the fact that they, uh, they sound better because they operate on a lesser amount of components. You want to kind of honor that fact and, and design around that and make, make your circuitry uh, the least complex as possible. Um, and this is why right now I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, let's say, hesitant about this network here, having to use these two resistors and maybe even this capacitor. So I'd like to just make it as, uh, as linear as possible without having to use as many components, which I'm not using many components at all right now, you know. But uh, you're always going to try to challenge yourself. The challenge is to kind of use the least as possible. Uh, but right now, real quick, I know this, this video is running a little bit maybe longer than intended. I actually just had to start uh, on another recording because the last one uh, filled up. So I think we sh should be getting over 30 minutes here. Um, but we'll write out this power supply just real quick. So we can just get an idea of what that's going to look like. So this will be our mains. Okay, just writing the winding here. This will be where our 120 comes in. And then this will be our high voltage. Okay. And remember this is a uh, this is a 380 volt center tapped. So what that means is there's a there's a uh, another wire there's a center tap at the uh, at the middle of this transformer which the, which splits the transformer so we're really only having 190 volts on each side 190 volts here 190 volts here uh, obviously I couldn't just use 190 volts to power this because I need at least I mean upwards of 300 volts to power this output this output tube the preamp circuitry will work fine on 190 volts but the output tube wouldn't. I want 300 plus. So what I'll have to do here is run a full wave rectifier. So basically use the whole, the whole winding of the transformer, which a lot of times you only use half wave rectifier, but half wave rectifiers only going to give you half a voltage. If I use a half wave rectifier, I'd only get 190 volts. We're going to use a full wave rectifier. So we're going to use a and a solid state at that. So we're going to use a solid state full wave rectifier. So I'm just drawing these diodes out here. Right. So this is going to be a solid state full way rectifier. I know this isn't looking very pretty, but it's not intended to. It'll get prettier as we go along. So we're going. We're not going to use that center tap. Um, that center tap will probably be capped or just cut off when you get to actually constructing this amplifier. So. This is where my negative that's where my negative will come off of. This is where my positive terminal will come off of. And we'll put the first cap here, the first capacitor that'll filter our high voltage will be right here. And as we go along, we'll add a resistor in between 
to lessen that voltage because again we want to stage the voltage in our preamp going into our going into our output uh, tube. Again, I don't know what values. We're going to do a whole other video on you know picking out the values and all that. But this will and this will go to ground, and that'll be basically that'll be basically my uh, my output section. Uh, so this we know this B plus we can call this B plus we'll call it B plus one. Okay. This B plus one will go here. B plus two and B plus three. So we want this first capacitor is going to be the highest voltage, right? So we have 380 coming out here. Again, it'll probably be somewhere between 450, 420 when it's actually rectified and filtered. So this is going to be our highest point of voltage which we want to go to this output tube. So it's going to be B plus one is going to go here to the output transformer. B plus two will go here to this cathode follower. B plus three will go here to this first stage. All right. So yeah, that's the general idea of what we're working with. Uh, the thing I have to do now is going along to do the second draft. The things to deliberate are how I want to set up this cathode follower and then where I want to put that tone control. And keep in mind, this could be, this could, this could change completely. Again, uh, most of this, this is pretty much set in stone how this is going to go. Um, and the output transformer or the output section is pretty much set in stone, but I'd say from about here, here on, from uh, this output for the uh, the preamp section, the preamp section is where we're going to deliberate the most because it's actually the, actually the most complex part of the amplifier will be the preamp section because it has to it has the most responsibilities, right? Because it has to. It has to incorporate the tone control, volume control, gain control, and it has to drive this tube, right? So that's where most of our thought is going to be put into uh, going forward. All right. Hope you enjoyed. We'll be back for another one soon.